Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Showtime Doctor. Today I'm going to be coming at you with a Vargas guide. So let's get into it here. So Vargas, reading through his kit, my god, this dude has so much damage mitigation. I can see why it's the favorite tank of a lot of pe people in this game. Uh, so we'll get into it. Uh, Vargas is a pikeman. And really important things on him. Essentially, it's just three stats. HP, defense, magic defense. That's really all you have to worry about. You don't have to worry about the other stats at all. So as far as what factions he's a part of... He's over here in the Empire's Honor, one of the better factions in the game. Uh, if you got a Bernhard, uh, I think, yeah, Leon can do it in one tree. I'm not sure if Adam Muller can, and Leiden, I believe, has a buff as well, or faction buff-wise. Vargas himself does not come with a faction buff, for your information. Then Vargas is also a member of Princesses, just kidding, Strategic Masters, so he can also get some... Actually, now that I think about it, this might be actually what Leon buffs. Yeah, I'd have to go look, but whatever. Not that important right now. But there's some really good uh, heroes in both of these. I would slightly give the advantage, though, to Legion, just because Legion's freaking stacked. Look at all those heroes. It's ridiculous. Most of them are pretty good. But anyway, so there's your factions. So we're going to get into the passive here. The passive that Vargas does. Higher troop HP decreases damage taken at most 15%. User will not die when suffering fatal damage. Afterwards, HP is returned to 15%, can only be used one time in battle, so he basically gets a free resurrect as well as some increased mitigation. And the higher you're taking your troops, especially your Lancer troops, which I'll, sh I'll show you guys some of the troops later, the more ridiculous and even more tankier this guy gets, and especially if you're investing in those uh, rock golems. It's too bad he doesn't get those lava golems. That would be freaking insane, but the rock golems are almost as crazy so uh first passive that you're gonna get with his base ability protect uh physical damage decreased by five percent when ally is under physical attack enters the battle instead of them so that's it seems like it's about a range of one because it didn't really give the range or anything but you know it's just your basic protect that most people got to go through as long as it's not a magical attack or a uh, like an assassin attack when the assassins try to ignore protect effects. So, let's get into... Go ahead and go to his class upgrades. <clears throat> now, without a doubt, in my opinion, th what you want to do with him is go down the middle path, which is High Lord, Vanguard, Royal Vanguard. There's your class masteries here. So you see how much HP and defense, etc. is all there. So when you come down to Vanguard, which is where I currently have him, <clears throat> passive takes physical damage instead of nearby ally. Active guard range is increased to two blocks, decreases received crits by 20%, grants buff powerful stab, replaces attack with defense times 1.6% or 1.6 times rather. Last two turns. So it's a pretty big pow uh, protect effect. Most of you guys are used to this by now, two, two range uh, protect effect. Protect effects in this game, uh, at least for these characters, they are physical damage, so they will protect you against like archers, assassins, as long as they're not doing their bypass uh, protection abilities, as well as any type of melee attack for the most part, dragon attack, stuff like that, anything that's not magical in nature. So, the troopers that he's going to get for this... You got your Elite Lancer, so it's basically the same thing as him. When attack, damage dealt, increased by 10%. Strengths and weaknesses, I'm assuming you guys all know that by now, so I'm not going to spend much time with that. Uh, the Orc here, you use the Orc if you're fighting against lan lots of Lancers, because they're strong against Lancers, and he's a Lancer himself, so he's strong against Cavalry. But these guys are weak against Cavalry, so, you know, pick your poison. But in general, for the most part, you're... Unless you need to tank something that's Lancery, you're not going to use the Orc Trooper too much. So, once you get past that, going to come down here. Oh, actually, you know what? I forgot to go over his other passive that he gets here. So, in his initial uh, class, Battle Ore is another passive he gets. After taking action, attack and intelligence of one nearby ally is increased by 15%. So, a buff for an ally. And Vargas himself is immune to attack and intelligence down, which 
Actually, that might just be the freaking... Never mind, that's my fault. Okay, I think the buff actually gives this out. Because I'm always confused with the period, but the buff it, itself might give this out. Because Vargas, it's decent if he has attack and end, but it's not really necessary. Although that deactivate active skills immunity, that's pretty good. So That's going to last one turn. It's just the buff he throws out to an ally, so it's pretty strong. So we already went over Vanguard. Now we're going to go down to Royal Vanguard. Now here's where it gets pretty crazy. So Heavy Shield. When attacked with a melee attack, 25% chance. Damage taken decreased by 50%. Pretty freaking ridiculous. Let me move myself there. Uh, that's going to be the trooper you're going to run for the most. Or excuse me, not the trooper. The ability that you're going to run for the most part. On pretty much anything else you're going to do with this character. Last stand, that's another passive. When troop HP is lower than 50%, when entering battle, defense and magic defense increase by 10%. Um, this depends on how buff you have your Vargas. This would actually be much better end game than early game. Not a bad ability, not a bad ability, but, um, also it's going to depend on how buff your troops are because you want your troops, if they're under 50%, you know, to still be alive, clearly. So this goes up. So this will be more of an end game thing, but early game and even late game, you're probably going to, uh, do heavy shield. Up until the stats get just so ridiculous on the percentages with your defense and your magic defense that this is better. But that's going to take a little while, so. As far as troopers go, you get the Vanguard Lancer. Same thing, except now whenever this soldier gets below 70%, attacks increase by 15%. Uh, really only good, generally PvP, fight against cavalry or just a big cavalry map. Really good against Leon, actually. Pretty good stuff there now oh excuse me guardian infantry it's just basically the same guy as we saw before but now defense is increased by 15 percent whenever his hp is under 80 percent so these guys are going to give you some options against counter class stuff or non-counter class stuff just depends on what you want to do but so this is the tree you're going to go down t for the passives right not necessarily the troopers even though there's some good troopers there now, I'll show you General before I show you Gladiator and Brave. A General, you get Armor Pierce, so... Single target, 1.5 times damage after battle, decrease enemy's defense by 30%. This is going to be really good against uh, heavy, you know, dragon stuff with lots of HP. Because uh, your Vargas is going to be in there tanking, so if you're fighting that, you take this skill with you. Just to lower the defense if no one else is doing that. 30% defense is a big deal. And then last two turns. Assuming that certain dragons, I think, are immune to that. Like, I think the ice one might be, but... Anyways, and then the troops you get here, you get elite cavalry, so you can combat the infantry weakness a little bit here. Good for tanking, takes damage down. You also get the Amazon. But you're probably not going to use the Amazon, <laughs> quite honestly. You know, if someone's found some hidden reason to use these guys over the elite lancers, let me know. Maybe they got something I'm not aware of. Uh, so for troops, what you're eventually going to co come do is come over to get Gladiator Brave. Gladiator, your passive. Attack Intimidate. After taking action, decreases attack and intelligence of all enemies within two surrounding blocks by 15%. Super good if you're going against uh, lots and lots and lots of, say, low HP troops, but heavy hidden troops, etc. You're going to take this on. So this is going to be really good for you. And then the troops you're going to start getting, you're going to get the Elite inf Infantry. Uh, notoriously good against tanking, you know, Lancers, etc. Bad against Cavalry, but Vargas can kind of handle you with Cavalry. But keep in mind, the troops always take your hits first, though, so you always got to think about that. And then Rock Golem. Rock Golem's just freaking insane. Uh, HP below 70%, defense is increased 14%. The more you upgrade these troopers and their upgrade, which I'm going to show you in a second, the more ridiculous they're going to get. Uh, so we'll go to the next passive here. Battle cry. Before initiating combat, dispels a buff from an enemy and increases enemies decreases enemies' attack and defense by 10%. This is surprisingly underrated in PvP, believe it or not, because you're gonna be protecting so much. And in PvP, you know, they're gonna have the faction buffs once you're above 35. Just dispel the living hell out of all the faction buffs and whatever other buffs are going up, like Liana buffs, etc. 
super good skill for PvP, so never neglect this skill in PvP if you guys are doing PvP. I know most people want to run the damage mitigation, which I understand, but start thinking about buff stripping if you don't have a dispel. So, and the powerful stab. Uh, the only thing about this, it does 1.5 times damage, single enemy, yada yada. But, before battle grants powerful stab, so you can replace it with defense times 1.6. Like I said, you're building his defense. So, this should actually hit fairly hard. Now, it's super hard, but fairly hard. And you can probably take some people out with this, especially counterclass. So don't neglect this ability if you just need like one real good hit for Vargas. Don't neglect this ability. Now, Orc Berserker, it's it's whatever. You might take these guys if you just want some extra kick. Because it's attack increased by 15%. So unless you're really specifically upgrading these guys, I wouldn't recommend that. But these guys though, the Stone Colossuses. Soldier HP below 70%. <clears throat> damage taken decreased by 10%. Now... <clears throat> By the time you get over here, like once you farm these and then this, and you get these troopers, the decrease 10%, unless you went this tree first for whatever reason, probably not going to be as good as defense increased by 14%. Probably, because by that point, level 35, 40-ish area, 45, you're going to have so much defense on your troopers that this is going to be quite a significant upgrade versus just flat 10% damage reduction. So be paying attention to that when you're upgrading your troops. Probably this guy, even though look at the base stats, 202 health, 253 health. But overall, this guy's probably once you upgrade him. I mean, I'm not saying because I haven't seen both troopers at endgame. Because when you upgrade this guy, the damage reduction is going to go up. So, and likewise, the percentages on the defense increase is going to go up. So, wh whatever you might be doing. But I personally am going to probably go for the Rock Trooper. Wish he could get the freaking Lava Golem, so... Oh, he would be such a beast with those. Too bad. But anyways, guys, that's your classes. So, skill builds, I recommend. Depends what you're doing heavily. Quite honestly. But, uh... What I would say is... Do this one to extend guard range, so you can have the two and then get the crit, crit damage reduction. And then... Uh, come down here, early game. You know, 25% chance to take damage reduction taken by 15%. Not bad late game, but definitely early game you want this. Late game, you're going to want this one to multiply your defense and your magic defense. And then take an offensive ability with him, in my opinion. So you could come over here, get powerful stab. Uh, Battle Cry, like I said, if you're doing PvP, Battle Cry will be really good. And then... This one... It's gonna be good on certain maps, but for the most part, I wouldn't... There's better debuffs out there. Better debuffers, for the most part. But, you know, if your Vargas is in the thick of things, you can consider that. General, it's, it's another active, so unless you're going two actives for whatever reason. I would only run Armor Pierce on Raid Boss type things, is what I would do, so... Normally, what I'm, what I'm going to do, he has his passive. You got here. Deactivate active skills. Or, excuse me, this is the buff, rather. Uh, you got the Unbreakable Guardian. You should run this at all times, in my opinion. And then, pick whichever passive you want. And then, for general stuff, you got the buff stripping. PvP. Uh, over here, you got the raid boss. I would probably run this normally, though, for most maps. Attack Intimidate. Along with his protection, which is right here. And then pick pick your buff there. That's what I would run. But your results may vary depending on how you're building them. So... Now we're going to get into... Passives and... Oh, as far as uh, one guy asked me in the last video or in one of my other videos. Uh, how is he early game? How is he end game? Vargas really shines early game. Just for the damage reduction. His damage reduction is insane. He's not going to be doing like the Freya uh, cleave stuff. Like the, the barb, etc. But what he will be doing. He will be reducing damage a lot better than she is. So consequently he will be staying up. In most cases longer. Even if he's getting magic attacked. Because you are focusing his magic defense as well. Now in game. He's still really good. And if you get the percentages up. He's still really good. Someone like a Leiden's gonna outshine him. Oh my bad, wrong guy. 
Aliden's gonna outshine him a little bit, but not. Aliden's really good in game and early game. He's just pretty good. Argus is really good early game and mid game. In game, slightly lags behind, but still really freaking good. You can still build him to be a super beast, and his damage mitigation arguably is the best in the game uh, for his role. So. Now I'm going to get into what enchants you should probably get. And for me, for Vargas, there's only one. Uh, you guys can argue. That's fine. Uh, but for me, the one to get on them is fucking ice. Just, uh, for those who don't know, you get your defense and defense. That's great. When attacked, 20% chance to render the attack unable to attack for one turn after battle. Goes off, it feels like it goes off at about a 35-ish or so percent rate, like once every three times he's attacked. So if you can just nullify the attacker for a turn, and like I said, Vargas is going to be protecting a lot. So if someone has multiple attacks, etc., that's going to be your guy right there. So that's what I do. Now you can go hard rock if you want even more damage reduction stuff, restore HP stuff. Not bad. If you want to do that, that's fine. And then, not crystal... Uh, thorns I wouldn't recommend, personally. Tree of Life, if you want to make him a little, like, buff battery. But I would go Ice, personally. Now I'm going to get into the gear. That he runs. So... The good thing about Vargas is he can wear a lot of gear. So if you're, like, saving your best gear for certain people on your team... Vargas can adapt to damn near any situation because all he really needs is gear that amps his HP uh, or his magic defense or his uh, regular P defense. So, But I'll give you guys some suggestions. There's still better other gear that's pretty good for him. So, uh, Yggdrasil Branch, defense plus 2%. That's going to increase as you level it. Ignore 3% of enemy's defense. Literally, this is just for the defense. If you happen to have one, you're not using it, you can give it to him. It's pretty good. And then ignores 3% of defense. Remember that a lot of times he has a bunch of skills that are attacking on a percentage of his defense. So you get that defense, HP. Not the best item for him, but still, if you got it, you can use that on him. Now, the blue star is actually something that's pretty good. Attack defense and magic defense increase 1% for every one block moved. As you upgrade it, that's going to upgrade like crazy. A little bit more HP. <clears throat> and then... Let's see here. We got the Cursed Lance, which is at 5-2. When initiating combat, defense increased by 3%. Magic defense increased by 3%. After battle, 25% chance to de deactivate enemy active skills pre and prevent them from being healed. So once again, he's going to be in the thick of things. This is going to debuff the enemy, buff him on two stats that are really important. Got, got your base HP right there. Pretty good stuff. And there's still all types of other good stuff for him. Uh, last night, not bad. Uh, before initiating combat, 25% chance to reduce enemy's attack and intelligence by 20%. If you're not running the aura, this is one thing you could run. If you feel like running some other stuff, you can still get your debuffs out. But not on an AoE basis, just on a single target focus basis. But once again, he's protecting. So if he's protecting, you know, before combat, he's going to have a chance to reduce the attack skills of the enemy. Attack stats of the enemy, rather. Pretty good. So we'll get over here to magic, or uh, excuse me, armor. Bloodline magic armor. HP and defense 1. Get your base HP and defense. When attacked with a melee attack, 10% chance to decrease damage taken for the battle by 30%. Doesn't go off a lot, but when it does, very noticeable. Uh, also, you got the Eolus Battle Armor. Basically, it does the same thing for range damage. So if you're going to be taking a bunch of range damage, this is the armor for you over here. Because he's still going to protect on most range attacks, uh, archer attacks, etc. Just not magic or some assassin attacks. Now, there is also the Twilight Armor. It's just base stats. But that's the good thing about Vargas is you can just focus his base defense, magic defense, HP stats. And he's still going to be beast and even if he doesn't have an effect on his armor. So if you got these but you want to give this to someone else, then alright. You know, you can give Vargas something else like this. Now then, as far as... <laughs> Piano Man's going nuts, huh? Uh, what other armor? The Mirror Armor. Pretty good HP and defense. 
When attack deals fixed damage to the enemy times hero's defense. So Vargas' defense is clearly going to be pretty good. So that'll do a decent amount of damage. Uh, and then also there is the Gaia armor. And I'm sure there's lots more armor guys. But I didn't want to just focus so much on the armor. And where the hell is the Gaia armor? I apparently wrote down the wrong thing. There it is. Alright, uh, when attack, defense increased by 3%. When troop HP is above 80%, magic damage taken decreases by 2%. Uh, Vargas' only real weakness is his magic. Because there's lots of real good magic characters in the game that they ignore a certain subset of magic uh, defense. 30% is usually the base. Uh, so the more magic defense you have, the more they're ignoring. So your Vargas being built with some magic defense is actually a really good thing. Because even though he's not protecting... That's usually what people are going to do to blow up tanks in this game. There are specific magic defense tanks, but uh, Vargas ain't one of them, for the most part. <clears throat> so, let's go over to helmets right now. You got your vampire mask on 2-3. Defense plus 2%. After taking action, 25% chance to decrease defense by 20% for one enemy within two blocks. So, if this guy's protecting, he's protecting a bunch of people... There's a good chance you're going to be throwing out defense downs on people within two blocks. He's going to be right there in the thick of things, like we say all the time. Uh, the Gaia helmet right here kind of does the same thing as the Gaia armor, which we showed you earlier. Uh, when attack, magic defense increases 3%. When troop HP is above 80%, physical damage taken is decreased by 2%. So, just more mitigation there to help you stack survivability. Yeah, on his helmet, which I actually have, which is funny... Uh, HP and defense, you know, like I said, you can give him the simple stuff. Has some base M defense, help him a little bit. And then we're going to get into uh, accessories. Now, I will warn you, a lot of accessories are really good on Vargas. I'm just going to show you a couple. Angel Feather. Uh, HP plus 2 is nice, but literally for the immunity to stun. If he gets healing effects plus 2%, that's cool too. For himself. Uh, magic defense, intelligence, not that big a deal, but just for the immunity to stun so that he's always protecting for the most part. Uh, unless he gets like a uh, passive skill deactivate or something. But you never have to worry about stun. So, King's Amulet, when allies within two blocks in battle, defense and magic defense increase by 2%. Well, pretty much an ally is going to be within two blocks of them all the time. Uh, if you're doing your strategy right. Blood Pact, HP. Immune that cannot be healed, cannot receive buffs. So just a big tankiness boost here because you get HP and you get HP percentage with flat. That's pretty sexy. Uh, then there's always the always sexy giant belt. When attacked with a melee attack, defense and magic defense increases by 2% in battle. So gets attacked with melee attacks all the time. And then the spear boots. You know, by now you guys should know this one. Defense... Flat defense, HP, initiating combat, it's possible to move two blocks after battle. So if you take Vargas himself and you go and initiate combat, you know, you can reposition a little bit if you want to get closer to someone to protect or block something, etc. So there's all types of other good accessories and gear for him, but just to keep the video shorter, some of the stuff I'd recommend on him. And... That's pretty much it, guys. I mean, Vargas is just a big beast, so, my opinion. So, that's gonna be it for the guide. Uh, I'll treat you guys to something special. I noticed I had a ton of crystals. I know most people, they're like, save your crystals. There's a crystal band coming on. Yeah, whatever. I want Liana. So, I'm gonna pull on this banner. Let's see if I get anything. If I get another lead, that'd be great, too. Anything else, let's do it. So... <laughs> Oh, and then also, I noticed that we're above 5,000 subscribers. I want to thank you guys. I'll make a separate video for it, but... See how this garbage goes. We got the dramatic music going. Ta-da! Come on, Rainbow. Hook me up, baby. Come on, Rainbow Bright. No, no, no. Alright, guys. Video's over. <laughs> now, let's see what I got. Who's that? Lance troll face. All right, well, I'm not gonna pull multiple times today, but anyways, guys, it's your boy Showtime Doctor. I guess I'll do my promo. Yo, I'm Showtime Doctor, Showtime DR. You found my YouTube, hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Also, uh, check the title info, you have to click show more. There's a link to my Discord and my Twitch. 
Uh, y'all should know what that stuff is by now, so I don't have to really tell you guys. And I'll catch you guys later on. Have yourselves a great night.